good to uh, be here. Appreciate uh, you being here also. And uh, we want to uh, urge you to pray for some of our folks that's got to have some medical things this week. And you remember them in uh, prayer that the Lord would uh, certainly help them uh, in their uh, endeavor. And I appreciate all that the Lord has so done. Then we have some that are having some problems today that they can't come because of the, uh, some, some health issues, nothing major, but just a few issues. And so let's just remember them as we pray. Uh, let's not forget that we are having a service uh, in the here tonight in, in the building. And you be praying about that. Uh, that the Lord would uh, help us with that as we begin uh, getting back uh, to sort of normal. And uh, you know, the, uh, uh, they're opening up a lot of things. So, I, and we're doing the same thing. But we appreciate the goodness of the Lord, appreciate all that God has done for us in these days. All right. Uh, I want you to turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 6. Book of Ephesians, chapter number 6. And um, we're going to begin a new message today on the believer's warfare. The believer's warfare. I normally don't uh, say anything much uh, especially on air, but uh, I'll tell you, I think we need to uh, pray uh, this tragedy uh, down in Florida where this building collapsed, uh, that uh, a lot of innocent people there uh, are trapped and maybe, and uh, so we certainly need to remember uh, that in our, in our prayers that uh, if it be God's will that they can rescue a lot of those folks and in there and uh, that, uh, that that's a terrible thing anytime you see that those things happen but, uh, that's part of belief, that's part of life but it's still terrible when we see these things that take place all right in the book of Ephesians chapter number six, Book of Ephesians, chapter number six. Um, I was going to preach this message many weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and we got off on uh, the idea of uh, knowing whether we've been saved or not. And I, I'm not questioning the Lord; He's the one makes the call. Uh, well, where we go with these these messages? So I'm grateful for uh, that. That way we know. And, and, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we're in warfare. Mm -hmm. uh, we are. Uh, we didn't understand that as well uh, a few months ago, maybe a year ago, or maybe two years ago. We didn't understand that as well, but we're seeing that now. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that we're in warfare. And um, uh, as I was talking to someone yesterday, uh, they were they were talking uh, about uh, the, seeing things in the end of time, and they, and and I think uh, I think we're seeing some of that. Now I don't know. Uh, I, I do know this. I know that the church is not going through tribulation, and I know the rapture hadn't taken place. But uh, we're seeing some things that uh, that's getting ready and. Uh, uh, of course, I still believe that God can have, have revival and people can get saved and, and we can turn some things around, maybe. Uh, if not, we'll all have a joyous time when we get to heaven, right? Amen. Uh, but we're going to have that anyway. But uh, uh, we need to think of that. But talking about a warfare, that's what we're in. We're in a warfare. And uh, if not, we'll find out. We're going we're gonna to see that eventually 
In uh, chapter number 10, I'm going to read, uh, start reading there in chapter, or in chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of, his, of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication of all saints. We'll stop uh, in our reading uh, with that verse. Let's go back to the Lord in prayer and certainly just ask the Lord to help us in these days. Our Father, we're very grateful this morning for all that you have done for us. Thank you for the good Sunday school. Thank you, dear God, for the Word of God. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would add your blessing to the reading of the Word. And our Father, we pray that you'd make it very easy for us to preach. Help us, God, preach, illuminate. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'd fill us with the Spirit. And we'd be able to preach under the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost of God. In thy wonderful name that we pray. Amen. 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 Now, as I've told you, I'm preaching this morning on... The believer's warfare. The believer's warfare. So we find in these passages of Scripture here uh, how that we're to dress, if I might use that term, some things that we must do to fight against Satan. And that's who the warfare is against. Uh, this is not a political warfare, although it may involve politics. This is not a uh, uh, a lot of things, but this is a spiritual warfare that I'm talking about. It's a spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. and uh, But we see that. And, and it's going to be that way. You know, you and I, uh, when Paul wrote this, uh, probably Nero or one of his predecessors was on the throne in Ro uh, sitting in the, the Roman uh, the power in Rome and he's writing this and he's telling us these things out of what God is telling us and he's showing us now we're talking about the believers warfare we don't have jets we don't have tanks we don't have uh, missiles that we fight our warfare with. We fight this war. This warfare is fought spiritually and by the things that God gives us to fight with out of in the Word of God. And we have a uh, some things here. We have six things. Five of them are all offensive, and then there's one uh, are defensive, and there's one offensive weapon, and that is the Word of God. And we're going to look at them. May I ask you a question? How much have you read your Bible this week? If you were a soldier, if you were a soldier in the uh, army of the Lord, uh, or if you're a soldier in our military in, the, in America, 
or in some military, this is where we are, in the United States of America, you're given equipment to fight the battle with. And you're to maintain it. You are to, uh, you're given a, a weapon. You're given a, a, a rifle. And some are given a handgun. And other things in, in military to fight. Others have knowledge that, and computers that they use to, as a weapon. But in the, the work of the Lord, we're given weapons. But coming back to that, how many of you, if you were in, in battle or getting ready to go to war and you hadn't checked your weapon in uh, two years or three years, uh, boy, I'd hate for you to be uh, protecting me uh, because, you know, I found out that sometimes they don't work. <laughs> you would think they would, but they've got dust in them. And uh, it's clogged up things, uh, some of the movements, and it don't work properly. Uh, you, you want them to work right. And it's the same thing with our weapons. Now, let me give you some things about the believer's warfare. Uh, there's several things here. Number one about this in our introduction, to deny the warfare will destroy you. If you think that you're not in a warfare, you're, you're, already, you're, you're headed toward defeat. We're in a warfare. I've often said this. I have often said this right here in this pulpit in the 37 years that I've been preaching right here, and I've said it in a lot of other places, I, I'm going to tell you something that we're going to, there, there are some things that we're going to have to face before we get out of here. But here's the thing, to deny the warfare, it will destroy you. You say, you go to the doctor, and he tells you you've got a disease. Oh, I, I don't have a cold. I, I don't have a cold. Uh, my, my body's too strong. I, I, don't, I, don't, I won't take a cold. I, I don't have one. But you, you do have one. <laughs> you see, or you do have something else. Um, to deny the warfare, it will destroy you. We're in a warfare, folks. That's right. Now, to doubt the warfare will doom you. To doubt it. We are in a warfare. And that warfare is not with each other. In fact, it's not even with the sinners. And we're going to find that out. It's not even with the sinners, but it's with the, it's with Satan. That's who this warfare is is ultimately with. And then to discern the warfare will deliver you. To discern the warfare will deliver you. Now, note those three things about the warfare. Now, what I want us to think about in verse number 12, in verse number 10, and, and then verse number 12, is the adversary, who the, who we're fighting against. Did you know in, in the militaries of the world, they spend many dollars on learning about their enemy, on about learning about their enemy. The Bible says in verse number 12 of this passage of Scripture, we're looking at the adversary, and the Bible says... For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, now look at some of these things. Look at these descriptive words. But against principalities. That already right there takes it away from humans. Principalities. And powers against the rulers of of darkness of this world against 
spiritual wickedness in high places. So, here's some things that we learn about our enemy. First, it's not against flesh and blood. Grantedly, Satan uses people. He uses people. But, and some of the things that go on may, uh, that looks like that it's people doing it, it's really, if you'll check behind it, it it's, has sat satanic overtones. We're fighting uh, not against flesh and blood. That's you and I. We're not fighting against you and I. But against principalities. Now, That, that word, look up that word when you get home in your dictionary or in your Bible uh, book. Look up that word principalities. Look that word up uh, and see what it, it says. Uh, the Bible says that we're working, that uh, we're fighting against, but principalities. And it uses the word against several times. And here I go back to this, what I've always said about any time, uh, the Bible only has to use a word one time for it to be fact. But when you see it over and over and over, especially in the same sentence, it's important that we see that. But, but against, uh, not against flesh and blood, but that is a contrasting conjunction. That means we're changing the way we've looked at it. We've looked at it first as flesh and blood. That's not what we're looking at. We're going to look at it in a different realm. And that's principalities. That's in, a, that's in another world. I've often said this to you, and I say it again this morning. If you and I could see the battle that's going on, spiritually, the battle that's going on around, around this building this morning, that's so we could stand right here and meet just like we're doing, and, and me preach the Word of God, and you're listening to the Word of God, and you teach the Word of God, if we could see the spiritual battle that was going on in this building this morning, around this building this morning, that we can't even see, but if we could see that, I'll tell you, it'd be an eye-opening experience. Mm -hmm. Principalities. Against powers. Against the rulers of darkness of this world. I think I used this last week, maybe. But this, this word, world, in the Bible. It doesn't mean the 25,000 something plus world, mile, thousand miles world that we're uh, the circumference of our world. It doesn't mean that. He's not talking about that. It's the Greek word cosmos. And that's that word imp implies that it's the, the word cosmos. That's that's the the evil world, the evil things, the, the things of the the things that of the world against what God does. So the these powers that and against the rulers. Now this word ruler here comes from that Greek word cos, cosmos. And it's uh, cosmotatus. That Greek word there, that means ruler in our uh, English language. And it's literally of, of the heavens. It's from this evil world system. From the evil world system. 
in which, guess who's in control of that? Satan. The evil world system. So, not a, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Literally, according to Cioscopio, that word high places literally means the heavenlies. These battles, these things that we're seeing, a lot of these things have the battle is going on somewhere else. Although we have worldly players in, involved and, and people uh, involved, worldly players, but the battle is a spiritual battle or a heavenly battle. The adversary, that's that's our adversary. Our adversary is not your friend across the road or your friend across the aisle. Your adversary is Satan. Now, we see the next thing, and that is the armor. We've all seen these, uh, these stories about the knights way back in the, some of the 12th, 13th, 10th centuries, these different knights that wore all of these armors and all of these things. And why, why do you think they wore them? Well, they wore them to protect them against the battle. Uh, that metal armor that they had on, I mean, it would protect them against the spear. If somebody was throwing a spear at them and hit them in the chest, it would bounce off. Or, uh, and I, I realize that they had different things that they could, uh, uh, big spears that they used on horses that would actually go through that. But this, but they wore the armor. Now, here's the things about our armor, verses 13 through 17. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. So I'm going to tell you right off, our armor is spiritual. Here's our armor. The whole armor of God. What God has given us to fight with, to protect us with. Most of it's for protection. Look at what he says. Now, for our strength, there is one, this is the most important part of that armor. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God. Now that's important. That we don't try to just piece it out and say, well, you know you're preaching about this, but I, I really don't think I need that. So I'm just going to pick out what I want. No, that's why we need the whole armor of God. Amen. The whole armor. That you may be able to withstand what day? The evil day. And having done all to stand. That's, that's the command right there in God's Word. So let's look at one of the most important things of the army. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. So the very first thing is the girdle of truth. The girdle of truth. The truth. The Word of God says that the truth will set you free. Amen. And by the way, He is the truth. Amen. Amen. He is the truth. But 
did you know in studying this armor that everything else that you and I, everything else that we put on is bound by that girdle of truth. Now, I don't have a picture to show you this morning. I, I, I don't have a, a soldier, a, a Roman soldier that I can show you here today. But the thing about that is he wore this, everything was right at their, right, right at their hand, right at their belt level. And that girdle of truth, tied all of those other things on there and helped them and secured them in the place that so you could fight effectively and fight that battle. So it's the truth. And, and we need to have the truth. And the truth I'm talking about is the truth of the Word of God, the truth of the gospel. Amen. The gospel is truth. And you need to know that. And we have that uh, there that we're able to stand. Having, therefore, your loins, and that is, that, that's the middle part of your body, gird about with truth. So we see that here is that girdle of truth. That's, that's our strength is the truth. Truth will never fail you. That's right. It will never fail. So we need these these things of truth. The truth is uh, in, uh, in God's whole uh, God's word, and uh, with the truth, current about, and then having on the breastplate of righteousness. These. Things that God has given to you and me. The, all of these things. Uh, I tell you, uh, I don't know whether you uh, know, and I've forgotten the name of this book, but it's by Tony Evans. And it uses these weapons, these things, about as we face things in life. Like pride. Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, uh, hatred or other things and, and these things as we go through life and he uses them in that sense in this in uh, how do we fight against them and how we use these armor this armor if you are a, uh, a fireman you have certain amount of what you, uh, you have certain amount of gear that you have to have you may not wear it all the time but especially if you're going out on a call, you've got to have it. That's one of the first things you do is you put on all of your gear. You've got a belt and a coat, and you put up, and it may be 90 degrees, but you still put that coat on. Why? Because you may need it. That may protect you from a fire. It may protect you protect you for something else, and you you put it on. But we find that. This breastplate, which goes around uh, uh, around the, our midsection, this this breastplate, and we put that on, and we're to use this, uh, of course, uh, in fighting in fighting this battle. Then the next thing we've got these pieces. The next thing is the, our shoes. Those of you that have been firemen or EMTs, you don't wear your tennis. You don't wear your tennis shoes out to uh, go to an, an automobile accident. You you got on boots, big shoes that will withstand broken glass and all of the things that you're going to encounter when you get there. Uh, so the shoes of the gospel. That the gospel is the power, the word of God. How much time do we spend in the word of God every day? I, you need to spend a lot of time in the word of God. Amen. We need to make a time 
And, and I know some of you can't do it in the mornings. You get up, uh, you have jobs that require you to be out very early. But sometime during the day, you need to spend some time in the Word of God. Amen. And studying and, and in the gospel. The gospel, do you know what the gospel is? The gospel is the good news that Jesus saves. Amen. Now, we find not only that, uh, not only we see the shoes that we have to wear, but the shield of faith. Faith. Now, we all, in verse number 16, he says right here, above all, above everything else, above everything, taking the shield of faith. We, we need that shield of faith. If there's anything that will quench those fiery darts of Satan, it's faith. Amen. Faith. And so we need that. And uh, he, he tells us, above, above all, above everything, take the shield of faith. Amen. And I'll tell you, I hope your faith is growing because I'm going to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. It, the, the longer we live on this earth, the closer we're getting to the coming of the Lord. Amen. And, and I'm grateful that there's... I, I'm hearing uh, uh, down in South Carolina, I'm hearing of, uh, of young people that are, uh, are getting saved. I'm talking about by the hundreds and getting born again. Praise the Lord. And, and, and they're having revival. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to need the shield of faith. We need the shield of faith. Mm -hmm. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, or actually the wicked one. Mm -hmm. So we see this is our this is our uh, warfare. This is our armor that we've got. Faith. Then in verse seventeen we find out the helmet of salvation. I found out that a fireman's helmet is not just to be a cute looking thing that they've got on, they wear on their head. I've seen them that they come to our schools a lot of times and, and I've been, had the privilege to see some of that. But that helmet is a very important thing in their armor, or in their clothing. You can, in some ways, I mean, it protects them from things that fall. And you can turn it another way, and it will it protects their eyes in their vision that so that they might can see in, uh, uh, in smoke or in different other things that they're going through with or, or other, other things that they're encountering. The helmet of salvation. That's why I spent three weeks telling you and me, all of us, that we need to know we're saved. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. We need to know that. Mm -hmm. So it's important that the helmet of salvation, that's one of the most important things that you're going to have with you as you start out, is to know that you've been saved. Because I'm going to tell you, you're going to run into that mm -hmm. <laughs> in just a little while in this battle. By the way, we're in a warfare, okay? We're, we're not, this isn't a little game uh, that's something that after a while the, the strongest one's going to win. No, we're in a war. Mm -hmm. We're in a, a battle. And we're not fighting a battle with one another. This isn't another army over here and another little army over here. We're fighting it against the powers of darkness, the powers of Satan. 
the, that satanic power and then that helmet of salvation is our security. It's our security. You know, we, we're big on, we Baptists are big on eternal security. But this helmet of salvation is security. Mm -hmm. Now the next thing. This is the only offensive weapon in the whole group. Everything else is defensive. And the, the only offensive weapon that we have is the sword. Ha, ha, have you looked at this? Now, look, we all do things. When our son was growing up, every time we went somewhere, especially to Tennessee, every time we went somewhere and got near a place that sold these things, he'd say, Bring me back a sword. Now he's outgrown that. I, I doubt he even, unless we have them, he probably don't even have one. But he was just young. But he'd say, bring me back a sword. And he didn't want a, a little bitty hand dagger. He wanted a big sword. That tall. He wanted a big one. This sword that he's talking about right here is the hand fight, hand dagger. Under that, that it was just a, about like that. Six inches, eight inches, ten. And it was for hand to hand combat. I'm gonna tell you, we've got a sword. Amen. And it's for hand to hand combat, folks. Amen. When we, we, we need to be using this. You, you need to practice with it. We need to be using this mm -hmm. to fight against the things of the devil. The sword. That's the only offensive weapon we've got. Mm -hmm. It's the word of God. Amen. Sword. And that's what it says it is. It says right here uh, in verse number 17, And the helmet of salvation... And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Let me give you. Amen. Over here in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, and verse number 12. I want to read a passage there. Hebrews 4, 12. He says that in Hebrews 4, 12, for the word of God. Listen to what the word of God is. For the word of God is quick. And powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit mm -hmm. and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Mm -hmm. That's God's word. Mm -hmm. I worked with this man, in fact, one day this week, had this little incident that uh, I, I probably have the most dullest knife that anybody ever carries. <clears throat> I, I used to have the one that I used to have a sharp one. I worked with this man. He's dead now. But every, every and I would work with him, and every every week he'd come in and say, sometime during the week he'd say, "Let me see your knife. Let me see your knife." And I carried a knife not to school. <laughs> I carried a knife ever since I've been. Just a little child. But he said, let me see your knife. So I pulled my knife out and I let him see it. And he'd give me that knife back and literally you could rub, you could pull your arm up and the, the hairs on your arm right there and slide that knife right down through there just real gently and you could shave with that knife. And <laughs> 
by the next week, uh, it was dull. And he'd say, give me that knife. And he'd say, what have you been doing with your sword, with your knife? Just using it. And he'd sharpen it up again. Sharpen it up. That's the word of God. Now, how do we do that? How often have you read your Bible this week? <laughs> oh, my. Don't that get down where we live? How often have you done that during this week, during the week? You picked up your Bible and you begin to read. How long? The sword, the word of God, God's word. Amen. Did you get what he said in the in the creation of the world? You know what happened? God spoke. That's powerful, isn't it? Amen. You know what God, this is? This is God's word. He, he speaks. Now, I want to give you, this, as I told you, there's six pieces of this armor. Five for defense, and five is the number of grace in the Bible. Just give you a few things. And then we have one for offense. And one in Bible numerology is the number for God. Mm -hmm. Three is the number of the Holy Spirit. Four is the number of, of the earth. Is an earth a number? There's four seasons of the year. There's four points on a compass. All of these things. But I want you to see the last thing here, and we'll be through, is the admonition. We have the source of our strength in verse number 10. I want you to see in verse 10. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's the source of our strength is in God. I, I want to give you one other thing right here uh, that God tells us to do with all this uh, all this armor with all of the armor and right here it is verse 18 praying always with all prayer praying uh, with supplication praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Amen. Look at two other places in the Bible. Look in Colossians chapter 4. And uh, Colossians 4 12. In, in the book of Colossians, chapter 4 and verse number 12, he said this. Epiphras, who is one, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you always, laboring fervently for you in what prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in the will of God. I tell you. Do you know one of the things that we've lost in our churches today is prayer? Let's just go over a little of that, and I'll be through here in just a minute. When I was just a young boy, and I'm older than probably most of you here, but when I was just a young boy, I can remember, listen, when the women would get in the Howard Gap Road and come down the road in our community and walk to Ebenezer Church on every Wednesday morning or Thursday or Wednesday, whatever day it was, and they would walk to that church. They would be there by 9 or 10 o'clock, and they would pray and have prayer until time to go back and fix lunch for their 
family and had it ready when they got the men got in. Every week, pray. Mm -hmm. Pray. I can remember prayer, prayer meetings. They used to have what was called cottage prayer meetings. Mm -hmm. Now let me wanna, let me tell you what that was. That was a man or a woman that would not go to church. And some of the relatives may have went to church and they would invite them to come to this person's house and they'd go in there and they would have church in that home on Saturday night and won a lot of people to God. Amen. Now we, I can remember a few cottage prayer meetings that I had here. And now what got into that and what ruined that is it was the devil. Now I, saw, I don't mind telling you. You know what? A lot of these, play, these little cottage prayer meetings turned into places that didn't like what the preacher had preached on Sunday and then have a little meeting over there and have a little prayer meeting at their place that they'd get some untrained preacher or some unspiritual preacher, maybe I'll put it like that, uh, some unspiritual preacher that wasn't in tune with God to come in and deny what that man had told, preached to them. That's what ruined the prayer, cottage prayer meetings. You see, Satan knows where the power was, didn't he? And that's what ruined them. Now, quickly, the source of our strength, the surety of our stand, and the secret of our success. All these pieces of, our, of the armor can be, can be possessed by the believer through Jesus Christ. Let me give you a brief outline of Ephesians. Verses chapter 1 through 3, he is the source of our wealth. Mm -hmm. The source of our wealth. Verses 4 and 5, he's the symbol of our walk. And the third thing, he is the strength of our warfare. The strength of our warfare. My friend, we need to be fighting with the armor of God Amen. all along. And above all, above all these things, we need to be praying. We need to, we need to pray and spend time in prayer. I can remember when churches had prayer meetings had prayer meeting before the service. Mm -hmm. The men would have prayer. The women would have prayer. That's That was back when you preached. And I'll tell you, friend, you could feel the power of God pulling people and you could feel the convicting power of God. One of the sad things is today, you can preach your brains out. And there's no convicting power. whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. Our Father, we pray God that you bless and help. Thank you for all that you've done. In your wonderful name that we do pray. Amen and amen. Let me ask you this this morning. If you need to come to the altar, I'm going to ask you to come. Stand, if you will, all over the building. You can, uh, Don't say take your mask off and let the devil know you're up here. <coughs> but I better not do that. <laughs> what I'm saying, if you're not right with God, I'm going to give you an opportunity to come right now. I'm, here's how I want you to do this. I want you to walk right down this aisle I, I, I'm not, uh, and just stand. Stand all in this altar. Stand in this altar. If you need to get right with the Lord, come right here. If you're saved, if you're here this morning, you say, Preacher, I've not even been saved. Then you do the same thing. You come right down this, right down here. 
I'm going to ask you to do that while we wait just a moment. While we wait, in just a moment, our Father, thank you for all that you've done for us. Bless and help. Dear God, we'll give you praise and honor and glory. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Don't forget the service tonight, 6 o'clock. May God bless you.